In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the top terms and concepts that any hyperbaric practitioner really needs to know and be familiar with, not only for themselves and their staff, but also to be able to explain to patients or other healthcare practitioners as they're trying to develop their hyperbaric business and practice. Okay, first one, super simple, HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. What is hyperbaric? Hyper is increased, baric is pressure, oxygen therapy. Even if you're breathing air inside that chamber, by increasing the pressure alone, you're also increasing the amount of oxygen you're driving into that patient. Whether it's air only or with enriched oxygen, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is increased pressure above whatever atmospheric pressure that you or that patient are accustomed to. And as a result of this increased pressure, we are driving more oxygen into that person's blood. For all the details about that, please check out previous videos on hyperbaric oxygen mechanisms, how it works, why it works. We have lots of videos on those topics. Hyperoxia, what does that mean? It's very simple. It just means increased oxygen inside your blood. As a result of being exposed to that increased atmospheric pressure and the increased percentages of oxygen, you're driving oxygen into the blood, creating hyperoxia. What is your breathing gas versus your pressurization gas? Your breathing gas is obviously what you or the patient are actually breathing, whether that's through a mask, through a hood, or what they're breathing just being inside that chamber. And the pressurization gas is the gas being used to create that increased pressurized environment. In certain chambers, they're the same. The gas that they're pressurizing the chamber with is 100% oxygen, and the gas the patient is breathing is that same 100% oxygen. In other situations, the pressurization gas is air, which is only 21% oxygen. So you're pressurizing the chamber with air. That's what's creating the pressure in the chamber. But you might be feeding the patient oxygen through a mask. So their breathing gas is, let's say, 94% oxygen or 50% oxygen through a mask or through a hood while they're surrounded by air, which is the pressurization gas. Some chambers, like I said, are the same, and many chambers are actually different. And so be aware of what equipment either you're going in as a patient or be aware of what equipment you're running as a clinic. Okay, next there's some units of measurement. This gets very confusing for a lot of people, but just to simplify it, we'll talk about the three most common. ATA, which is atmospheres absolute, PSI, which is pounds per square inch, and FSW, which is feet of seawater. We talk about feet of seawater because most hyperbaric history comes from the scuba diving world. And so we talk about depth in terms of feet of seawater. And what you should be able to do is you should be able to convert in between each of these units so that you can have a logical conversation regardless of what the training of the person you're talking to was. So somebody that might be talking about atmospheres needs to be able to understand what feet of seawater are. Somebody who's whose machine is gauged in PSI, needs to know what are the ATAs, what are the atmospheres absolute of that same chamber. If you're interested to be able to convert in between these different units, below I'll just add some conversion equations just so you can see how you can manipulate those equations and, and be able to interconvert between different units. It's just important that you understand that these are all different ways to measure the exact same thing. And you want to make sure that you're speaking the same language as the person you're talking to. So everybody's on the same page with regard ultimately to what matters, which is what is the patient being exposed to? And are these protocols equivalent based on their units of measurement? If you find this information helpful, please check out some of our older videos. Definitely look at the ones that I referenced in this video about oxygen toxicity especially. Please share this video if, with somebody that you think might benefit from it. And when you hit the like button and the subscribe button, it tells YouTube that this is valuable information and that helps other people like you find these videos. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get as much of this information out to the people who are looking for it. So please help us help you, help us help them. Dive tables, bottom time, and air breaks. A dive table would be a picture representation of what the treatment looked like. So what you'll see is that there's a period of descent followed by a period at bottom time, which is the actual treatment period. And then there's going to be a period of an ascent. The descent isn't a straight line down. It's a curvy linear line down because you descend over a period of time. You then get your treatment for whatever period that's going to be. And then again, you ascend slowly back to the surface. The dive table tells you a lot. It tells you the length of time it took to get to that depth. It tells you the length of time they were at the bottom, which is their treatment depth. And then it shows you the period of time it took to get back to the ascent. It'll also tell you what they were breathing. So were they breathing air? Were they breathing oxygen? Or were they taking air breaks? An air break is you're on oxygen for a period of time. And then you take, let's say it was a mask, you take that mask off and now you breathe air for a period of time. You put the oxygen back on for a period of time then you breathe air for a period of time. That's an air break. 
Okay, so a dive table is a visual representation of the treatment as a whole. Bottom time is the actual depth that that treatment took place. And an air break would be represented by stripes showing different gases that the patient was breathing over different periods of time. A dive table is just a really easy way to show somebody a protocol in a singular picture, and you know everything about that journey, and you can duplicate that on your own. And so it's a great tool to use to be able to share protocols with other practitioners. Okay, next is oxygen toxicity. Oxygen is an amazing gas that we can use therapeutically and in other modalities, from hyperbaric to ozone to EWAT to just breathing oxygen on the surface. Oxygen has tremendous amounts of benefits, and it's a requirement. You can only hold your breath for so long because we need to feed ourselves oxygen every minute of every day. And so oxygen, while it's so critical, you can get too much. And if you get too much, it's a thing called oxygen toxicity. We have videos on oxygen toxicity describing the two types of oxygen toxicity, central nervous system oxygen toxicity, and pulmonary oxygen toxicity. So there are two types of oxygen toxicity, one that affects your nervous system because you got too much oxygen in a very short period of time, that's central nervous system oxygen toxicity, and then there's pulmonary oxygen toxicity, which is even moderate amounts of oxygen, not in a short time, but over a long period of time. So knowing what oxygen toxicity is, knowing when it occurs, and knowing, most importantly, how to avoid it so that you can keep yourself or your patient safe those are the critical pieces. Please check out our videos on oxygen toxicity so that you can understand in detail what those differences actually are. But just understand that oxygen, while it is incredibly useful, there is a toxicity point. And so know that it, it can be dangerous and know how to keep you and your patients safe from it. Next is going to be pneumothorax. There are very few contraindications to hyperbaric. There are only two absolute contraindications. These people cannot go inside of a chamber. And that is number one, if they can't equalize their ears. If they can't equalize their ears, they're going to experience pain. You should never have pain inside of a chamber. And so if they can't equalize, they can't go. So one of the absolute contraindications is the inability to equalize. The other absolute contraindication is a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is a popped lung. If you have a hole in your lung or a patient with a hole in their lung, a patient with a pneumothorax can never go inside that chamber. There is one exception, we're not gonna cover it. But generally speaking, for your purposes, patients with a pneumothorax cannot go inside that chamber. And that doesn't mean if they've ever had a pneumothorax. If, you've, if, they, if you or a patient have had a pneumothorax and it's completely resolved, you have a chest X-ray to show that you are completely intact, those lungs are, are, are healthy, and there is no hole or issue in that lung, absolutely, that patient can go into a chamber. It's only if you have an active, untreated pneumothorax. I hope this information is helpful. Again, I'm just trying to share with you some basic terms and terminology and concepts about hyperbaric so that you become proficient and you know what you're talking about and you're confident about hyperbaric, how it works, and why it works. See you next time.